Hi hey guys, so I've got a nice little plug-in here, a uh, modification of the existing uh, um, Snap to Grid plug-in. Um, you might have no seen it before. I've never used it. I don't know anyone that actually uses it, but um, of course there is an existing Snap to Grid functionality uh, which can move stuff around according to a scale. So plugins. Snap to grid size is typically at five is this this default size, so it moves the nearest five on um, whatever position axis. But the, the problem with that is um, it, if all your assets are not exactly scaled to match that grid size, it's not going to line up. For example, this one here. It's going to overlap or, or not match because because the the assets themselves are not not scaled. See that? There's the there's the line there. See it's overlapping. Um, so if I get it right on the edge, it overlaps. Um, so you need to scale all the assets according to the the uh, grid size. That's it's a little bit. That's quite a pain actually. So I've created an automated way to do that, and it actually works really well. Uh, you really enjoy this one. This will. Uh, you won't need to be using uh, SketchUp anymore, uh, pretty much, for level editing. You can just use CopyCube now with this plugin. Uh, unless, of course, you're editing, uh, creating mesh objects and doing all the whole thing in, in that, you can use that still. But uh, if it's just creating levels from existing assets, which is what I need it for, which I want to do a lot in my game, um, you just you can do it on CopyCube now. You don't, I was using Unity. It's actually better than SketchUp in terms of uh, snapping objects together. Yeah, of a predefined fixed scale and size. I was using Unity just for that alone, and then exporting it back out into CopyCube. Uh, well, you actually don't need to use that at all uh, for, for just uh, for snapping objects. Now you can use the CopyCube, and I'll show you how to fix these problems. Uh, let's just just go with uh, grid size, for example, two to start with. Uh, probably stick probably five is a good one for later on, but just for this demo, I'm going to show you a two. Uh, okay, so so I've got uh, the plugin. Um, I've updated the plugin. As you know, it's under Documents, Copy Cube Plugins. Um, just make a backup of your old one and just over just drop that in there. Snap to Grid. It's the same name, same format. Um, so plugins. So you've got that. Now you've got these new ones: scale, scale item, and position. So control space and space. So it's all based around the space bar. Now that doesn't with two. It doesn't line up. See all the gaps everywhere. See all the gaps we're seeing everywhere, um, all over the place. Now we don't want to manually moving things around. That's a pain in the neck. So let's just. We've selected a scale of two. Now we just want to rescale all our assets to match. Uh, so control space, uh, new scale to match grid snapping of two. It tells you the, the scaling that's going to apply to each of the axes, uh, which is not much for this for two. The higher the number, like five or ten, it's going to have to scale it higher because it's got to um, round it up to the next nearest. Uh, bigger number of a scale so so this one here a little bit of change but not too much um, now well, okay we'll just line this up at this end here so just move it over reasonably close and spacebar there you go this one here um, let's control space okay if, if it's already scaled it'll tell you this one's not scaled so once again nine per nine percent on the x-axis okay all right I guess it's not the end of the world. Um, so now we can um, join it up. It's a little bit of a gap. Just move it close, and boom. Or see if it's not too close enough, it won't 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 connect. It'll go the other way. Uh, so that's with two. So that's why I probably use three or up between three and five is probably good because it's it's just easier to snap things together. Uh, maybe maybe even higher than five. Um, as long as you don't mind scaling your objects a bit more. Um, now, that'll be all directions, by the way. So, for example, if we move that up uh, a little bit, it'll move it back down again. Uh, so, so all, all that way, moves it back into position. This here surface. Um, so that's already scaled for grid size of two. Okay, that's good. So we'll just 
press the space bar, boom, up we go, we're done. What about this one? Is that scaled? Control space. Yes, that's already. And now uh, we just got to reposition. Is that right? Space. There we go. Space bar, and it's it's all lined up. Good, beautiful. Um, all right. Now, what about uh, what about this one? Control space. Okay, so we've got a bit of adjustment on the x-axis, but that's all right. We've got to do it. So that's it. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that's lined up already. That's pretty good. Yeah. And what about this one? Uh, yep. Same again. Move it close and space bar. Snap it. Boom. Beautiful. Notice how there's no. Uh, okay, hang on. There's one thing I think. That roof. Okay, the roof is not quite right. That's already scaled, so that's cool. Okay, so that's actually positioned. Once you uh, this this roof is not right. Let me check that. It's already scaled. And then press the space, and boom, it's just uh, lined it up automatically. Beautiful. Very quick, very easy. This is as good as Unity, if not better, because I like the controls in CopyCube better than any other. Better than SketchUp, better than uh, Blender, better than uh, Unity. I don't like using the middle mouse button, the right mouse button. You just use the cursor keys, move around real quick, nice and easy, just like you're playing a game almost. Um, so easy. Yeah. So um, that's why I like it. Yeah, so it can uh, save you a lot of hassle. Um, notice how there's no white lines now. Um, I'm not talking about the mesh. In that mesh itself, it does have a little gaps. There's faults in the mesh. But on terms of, I'm talking about in terms of the joints between surfaces, there'll be no, um, no white lines. See? Um, that's in the mesh. Those white lines there in the mesh. I'm talking about the joins there, at the sides, and in between these this floor. No, this, the ends there. No, um, yeah. So forget about the, the mesh problem. That's a different issue. But um, in terms of the roof, see, it's all lined up. No, no white lines. It's all very nice and so easy, so quick. Um, now here's that's that's for objects with the three-dimensional mesh. Now what about objects that uh, what about objects like this where you've got um, paper thin walls? It's much harder to line these type of objects up. Manually is actually an incredible pain in the butt. Um, it's so difficult to get it all right. Uh, with this it's a lot easier. Uh, so long as you center the pivot point. Okay you check that it's scaled. Okay this one's not scaled so <clears throat> it's got a two percent adjustment. Okay Boom, okay, and lined it up perfectly too. Look at that. Um, these ones will be harder to do. Uh, two is a little bit on the low side. I'd probably go with like three to five um, as the grid scale. It is easier because otherwise it may not still line up as you'd expect. You might say, okay, that looks close. Press the space and no. So in other words, you've got to check all the angles that it's close enough so that it can, it can snap automatically in place. Um, yeah, so these ones might be a little bit harder. Um, yeah, so maybe this so for the demo was two. Let's let's just um, let's just change that. So what about five? If we go five, now we're going to resize it. Control space that one and that one. It made it a lot easier actually. Let me check. Oh, see, it's a lot easier because there's more of a gap that it can um, fix by itself without you needing to check. Yeah, so probably five is really a good number or, or higher. So if it's too far away, it won't be able to do it. Close enough, boom, there you go. So it could be out any angle, up, down, left and right, and out all over the place, and boom, it'll fix it up. So that's super nice, perfect. Yeah, so you can do all your levels that way. Um, the higher the number, it's easier to snap things together, uh, but it will re um, scale your objects uh, a lot more, that's all. So it might be out of proportion a little bit. Um, yeah, uh, but you can sort of, there's ways around that. If it, if it, it does it to the rounded to the nearest uh, size, if it's, it might go too small, 
or you, you prefer it to go higher than, than lower, then just, just scale your object a bit bigger. So when it re-scales it to, say, 5, it'll, it'll bring it back down to a bigger size rather than a, a smaller size. Um, so that's a way around that. So this is a really nice uh, thing. Now, this here is a different issue. Uh, so you've got separate little walls and items that you want to all line up. Um, for example, you want to put that one over there. Let's just check. The, okay, it's been resized. Okay, space. Yeah, we, we've, we've joined it up this way. Perfect, nicely. So you got, see that? It's exactly nice. No overlapping, no, no gaps. But there's a gap here. Now, why is that? That's because the mesh itself is not the same size as the one next to it. Um, this here, this bottom pipe, I've shrunken it so it's it's actually doesn't stick out. See, so you, you need when you when you're doing this 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 type of thing, you want all the objects to be uh, this, if it's if it is the same design to be basically the same size of the uh, uh, box. Whereas with this, uh, see that one, it's 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 exactly picking up the outside edge. Uh, that's fine, and that and this this here pipe at the bottom is not sticking out, whereas on this one it is. I have to I'll have to change this one. See how it's the collision box uh, is actually it's hitting that outer edge of the pipe at the bottom, and so that's why these these that one there uh, is different from all the rest because either they don't have pipes or this pipe has been shrunken. So in in cases like that, just to set it up initially, you only need to do it once, and then you want to use copies of it later on, it'll all be good just need to segregate that item out and shrink it in so that it doesn't stick out more than the other assets so probably editing triangles select um, let me just try not to cause too many overlaps here uh, so we've got some try not to select anything more than I need to I'll have to just make adjustment for that later so there's that all right, so we'll just work with that. Create new mesh object. Highlighted three. Um, okay, so delete that. So we're going to attach that back, that one we just created. Hold it. Left click, hold. Page up. All the way back to, you have to know which one it is. Um, it's base three. I, know just, I just know for this one. You have, should just remember it. Zero it out. So it's back where it was. Um, I'm going to leave it at zero, zero, zero. I'm not going to rescale the recenter the pivot point because it's easy just to know zero, zero, zero. Uh, now I'm just got to put back the stuff I've. I want to put back, uh, which is that. Okay, so it's just that as the back of it. Tools, create new mesh object, go back to delete from that. Attach it back to that again, separate, um, zero it out, and then also zero out this back to the original position. So now we have the backing is good, but we, to merge that, just drop it out of that one level up. I don't know if that causes a problem, but anyway. So we want to merge that back into that, which is the backing. Um, so go start with the one you want to keep. Merge that into number two. All right, so that's now ready to go to modify the size of this by itself without touching anything else. Um, actually, I just want to make that now, now that it's in the right position, I, if I want to, I can send to the pivot point if it makes it easier. I think it does. So just make it a bit rounder. I think it looks better that way. Uh, yeah, not too much. Um, all right, so and then we're going to push, don't move anything else except for this direction. Now we want that line. See that green line? We just want to make sure that is right on the edge where it's supposed to be. So there you go, just there. So it won't stick out past the, the standard collision uh, box. Uh, there you go. You can actually see it's not affecting it. That one. 
slightly just just inside of it so that's fine so that's good so we're good now so now we can go tools merge it back into that so now that's been repaired so now we've got to resize it again control space okay that's already resized okay well it's fine and now we'll just join it up that should let's just get it close space okay now what we've done wrong there we've got to recenter the pivot point sorry center the pivot point rescale it okay so we've got a little bit of adjustment yeah okay and now press the space and now it lines up as as you expect there you go all directions top bottom yep all good beautiful so that's just a little adjustment there <clears throat> if you get any assets just to set it up initially so it's all basically the same proportions because these are all you know standardized sizes so you want them all to line up yeah so that's how you can do it uh, it's a nice little plug-in you can get off itch.io um, yeah and now you can uh, really fast track your levels that way um, a lot better I find yeah um, yeah so I don't need to use unity anymore I was, I was using it just alone purely only for the uh, object snapping which is, is quite good for them you just hold the control button down and, and it, it snaps things together well this is almost the same thing uh, yeah so I uh, hope you like that it's a very cool plugin I think it's gonna help create levels so much quicker and easier yeah so I hope you like that uh, let me know give some feedback and uh, let us know what you think um, cheers